Bill, you're a man of the people, and I have to imagine that everyone on the streets of L.A. still <laughs> rightly celebrating, like we are, the firing of Jeff Fisher, right? Yeah, I'm not a fancy man, but I bought some Dom for the first time and cracked that baby open because it was such a beautiful moment. As I came into the studio, Adam, here in Los Angeles, I'm pretty sure I saw throngs of people dancing in the streets, confetti in the air, long overdue that Jeff Fisher and his tired act as a mediocre at best head coach got the hell out of town. And seriously, like, I live obviously in this city. I have a lot of friends who were Rams fans before they left for St. Louis and re remain Rams fans now that they're back who are absolutely effusive in their joy that this dude is no longer in charge. Uh, it's a great moment in the history of Los Angeles sports. And, Bill, we started the show <laughs> talking about the idea that tonight is, is an audition for them, an audition when you look at coaches who are going to be looking at the Rams saying, do I want to take that job? I still think this is an attractive gig. Do you? Adam, it's a really interesting question, and I think the answer is it depends on Jared Goff. If you have a head coach comes in, if you're a, a future head coach, particularly a guy who has some experience in coaxing the best out of quarterbacks, I think it can be. But the Rams obviously traded a boatload of their future, a whole bunch of picks to move up to that number one spot in this past NFL draft to take Jared Goff. So if you look at Jared Goff and you say to yourself, that's a guy who can be, even at worst case scenario, say, a, I don't know, an Alex Smith, a serviceable, reliable quarterback in the NFL over time, it's a very reliable job. You're about to move in 2019 into an incredible multi-billion dollar stadium in Inglewood. We would presume if you had an offensive line that Todd Gurley is a running back, most people would be excited to build an offense around. And the defense obviously has a lot of talent, but I think, Adam, that question really hangs on whether or not the quarterback that the Rams traded so much for can be somebody you can rely on to win football games in the future. Bill, obviously we still have uh, some football left to play, but who do you think we're going to see in Super Bowl 51? You know, uh, so this is not an incredibly sexy take, but I think it's an obvious one. I think the Cowboys, as much as it's almost too good to be true for Roger Goodell in the NFL, are easily the team to beat in the NFC, despite the fact that maybe Dak is regressing a little bit, a little more tape on him. And I'm going to tell you, Patriots, I'm going to say it's Patriots-Cowboys just because I believe Tom Brady channeling, I'm going to go Star Wars here for you, Adam, channeling the dark side of the force mm. is really hell-bent to prove the NFL wrong and to get a little bit of revenge for that four-game suspension. However, I'm going to throw out a sleeper name in the AFC, and that name is the Kansas City Chiefs. I think the road's a lot more difficult for the Patriots because I think that AFC West has two or maybe three teams that on any given day, even in January, even in the playoffs, are good enough to beat the Patriots if they catch them on the, in the right moment. So give me the Chiefs as a sleeper, but I think it's probably Patriots-Cowboys.